while. So I'm going to do a couple five minute videos right now. And the first one I want to do is I want to talk about these coaching contracts. Okay. So coaching is a humongous industry. A lot of my clients are coaches. And so in this case, one of my clients who is a coach hired a coach, right? It's, it's all very around and around. So the specifically they were hiring a coach to help them with marketing. And the dream, and by the way, I've hired two coaches since I started my law firm, and I understand it. What they're doing is they're identifying a fear, right? And as a business owner, I, I know the fear very well. And it's essentially the fear of working really hard and not making much money, of maybe going out of business, of not being able to pay your employees, of not being able to pay your mortgage. And so that fear can gnaw at you, right? And so you're looking for someone to help you with that fear, maybe take that fear away, maybe find the solution to all of your problems. Wouldn't you like to work less and make more money? And so there's a lot of these people advertising on YouTube, advertising on Instagram, and they're selling that dream, right? The dream of working less and making more money and having more financial freedom and control, right? I've, I've heard the, all of it. And so this particular client of mine hires this company. Now, mind you, they send over a 12 page contract. It's not the most beautiful contract I've ever seen. It wasn't written by a white shoe law firm in New York City, but it's a contract. It's a decent contract. They send it over DocuSign, my client signs it. And so of course I say to my client, because let me just give you the context. I'm talking to my client because my client wants out of the contract and they want their money back and they're not happy with what they signed up for. And so of course now I'm talking to the client. And I say to her, why didn't you call me first? She goes, what do you mean? I'm like, if you'd called me a month and a half ago when you were about to sign this contract, I would have said, hey, hire me for a consultation. Let's just go through the contract together. Let's identify any red flags. So here's red flag number one. It's California law, California jurisdiction. Well, I'm sitting in Miami, Florida, and my client is too. And so now, you know, potentially we're gonna have to hire lawyers in a foreign land, foreign jurisdiction. And I say foreign because it's outside of Florida. And number two, it's arbitration. So arbitration is a private court-like process where you are hiring an arbitration company and basically you're bound to it because it's in the contract you signed, right? The contract you signed said, in the event that we have a fight, we're not going to court, we're going to this private company. And there's basically two main ones in the United States. There's the American Arbitration Association and there's another one called JAMS. And basically they're the two big heavyweights in this, in this world. And so this particular contract said, you will go to American Arbitration Association. So I say to my, my client says, well, what does that mean? I'm like, well, you know, when you go to court, sure you have to pay a filing fee, but the judge is on the taxpayer's payroll, right? The judge is an employee of the state. When you go to private arbitration, it's a private company run kind of like a law firm. And it's usually former judges and lawyers. And so they literally require in this case with this amount, and by the way, the bigger the amount you sue for, the bigger their, their initial fee, just the fee to get it off the ground is 1700 bucks. So to put it in perspective, my client signed this contract for 9,000. So it's 9,000 for the, for the, what she signed up for. And now she wants out of it and push comes to shove. If we have to end up trying to sue to get her money back, we have to pay 1700 just to the arbitrators. And that's not to mention whatever you pay to me. And then not to mention there's an attorney's fee clause where if everything goes backwards and we lose, then you're on the hook for what you paid your lawyer, what you paid to sign up for the contract, what you paid the arbitration people, which could keep going up. It's not just that first 1700, it could be higher and higher and higher, thousands and thousands. And then you could get hit with the thousands and thousands from the other side's uh, attorneys. And so big picture for $9,000 is probably not worth it. Probably not worth it to start World War III in a very expensive place. Now, Arbitration, the, the, the old saying is that it's a lot faster than litigation. Litigation can drag on for years. And yes, it's faster, but it's not more, not less expensive. The amount of stuff that you do is just compressed into six months instead of being spread out over three years. So if you'd rather pay spread out over three years, it's actually a lot better to be in regular court than if you want to pay everything in six months, it could be a lot more expensive. And there's other deficiencies. There's no right to appeal. And so if you get a bad judgment and you're just like, I don't agree, I think the arbitrator got it wrong, there's really nothing you can do to, to, to second guess it. And you can be you know, in a very expensive situation. So I, I say to my client, listen, and, and by the way, poor lady, this has happened to her before. I said, please, if there's ever a next time, bring the contract to me, we'll go through it together. And maybe I wouldn't have talked her out of it, but at least she would have been eyes wide open instead of learning about all of these problems now after the fact, 
after she's upset and after she wants her money back. So guys, if any of this resonates with you, please leave a comment below. I'll try to respond to as many as I can. And thanks a lot. Bye.